Hey booktube, welcome back to the History Shelf. My name is Peg. Happy Solar Eclipse Day. It is now all over. And we survived. We survived the uh, apocalypse of the eclipse. <laughs> um, say, welcome to a new edition of Indie Author Spotlight. And I'll be featuring several books that I have received from independent authors. Um, or their publicists, and these are revolving around historical fiction. I have a couple more videos coming in this series in, in the author spotlight. One will be for um, nonfiction. I've got uh, a work of history and uh, a, a work of memoir and history, and then one of just memoir. So, and I'm really excited to show you those three books, but I'm going to put those in a separate indie author uh, video. But for the purposes of this video, it's Indie Author Spotlight Historical Fiction. And I know many of you out there really enjoy uh, learning about um, new historical fiction from new authors. And you know that we support indie authors on this channel. Um, so let's just dive right in. We're going to start with this one, that which I can't wait to start. I haven't yet. Uh, it's inspired by a true story. And this is called Your Forgotten Sons by Anne Montgomery. This is put out by Next Chapter uh, Publishers. Next Chapter right down there. So let me tell you what this, this book is about. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. Bud Richardville is inducted into the Army as the United States prepares to enter World War II in 1943. A chance comment has Bud assigned to the Graves Registration Service, where his unit is tasked with locating, identifying, and burying the dead. Bud ships out, leaving behind his new wife, Lorraine, a mysterious woman who has stolen his heart, but whose shadowy past leaves many unanswered questions. When Bud and his men hit the beach at Normandy, they are immediately thrust into the horrors of what working in a graves unit entails. Uh, Bud is beaten down by the gruesome demands of his job and losses in his personal life, but then he meets Eva, an optimistic soul who, despite the war, can see a positive future. Will Eva's love be enough to save him? Uh, and actually, yeah, this comes out... Oh, perfect. This is going to this is going to feed into my new event that I'm planning. This book comes out on June 6th. And what is June 6th, everybody? That is the 80th anniversary of D-Day. So, um, the history shelf will be recognizing that. And uh I'm still putting it together in my mind, but stay tuned for future a future video announcing my event, my readathon event or yeah, read along, readathon. It's gonna just encourage you to read about D-Day, um, and your forgotten sons. I'm gonna bring this book back uh, for that event, and uh, I'm gonna try to get this read before then, so I can give you some feedback on it. Um, but yeah, how perfect that it comes out on uh, the 80th anniversary of the uh, the D-Day, the Normandy invasion. Um, perfect. I'm so, I'm so tickled. This fits right in with my plans. Your Forgotten Sons by Anne Montgomery. And it sounds really interesting. I've never read about someone who, um, you know, obviously soldiers did work in the uh, the graves unit, uh, the graves um, services. What is it? The graves registration service. I mean, that's just got to be brutal, brutal work. <clears throat> And so, but based on a true story, so people obviously, you know, had to go through that. Um, next up, for all you Viking fans out there, we have a new indie author here who wrote a book called Born a Viking, Bloat. And Bloat is the name, I think, of the uh, the character. And this is by Ricardo Palacci. Uh, I think this is... I think this might be independently published. Um, I think there might be more in the series coming, but let me go ahead and give you uh, just a synopsis of what Born a Viking Bloat is about. Um, in Viking Age, Scandinavia, 
Sigurd, a nine-year-old Norwegian boy, is accompanying his family during a spiritual pilgrimage to Uppsala, Sweden. Eirik, or Eric, Eirik, his father, is a mystical and mysterious legendary warrior. During this spiritual experience, Sigurd discovers that Eirik is the leader of a secret group of outcast shaman warriors devoted to Odin. As he digs deeper, Sigurd struggles to understand whether his father is to be revered or despised. Immersed in the heart of Norse paganism, Sigurd starts experiencing mystical visions guiding him to follow in his father's footsteps. However, as his family's past comes back to haunt them through a tragic and brutal murder, an intricate conspiracy is unveiled, threatening the very fabric of Scandinavian culture. Mysticism and legend blend with the harsh reality of greed and politics as Sigurd fights for survival while struggling to accept his destiny. Sounds really good, doesn't it? I think uh, Vin over at Revenant Reads, you might want to check this out, Vin. Um, I think you can get this right now on Amazon. Let me read you a little bit from there's a note from the author in the back. Um, let's see here. Kind of asking for re reviews on Amazon if you, have you read it. Um, um, it says here, moreover, if you're interested in staying connected and being the first to know about the latest Born a Viking Saga updates, okay, you can sign up for his newsletter. Um, yeah, so this could be an ongoing series of um, sagas, like Born a Viking is the series, and maybe, maybe each new one will have a different character. I'm not sure. But I wanted to let you know about this one. All right. Born a Viking by Ricardo Palacci. And next up, we have, this is put out by Palmetto Publishing in South Carolina. And um, yeah, this is interesting. This is called The Search by Dwayne Ray. I believe that's how you pronounce that, Ray. The Search. All right. So what do we have here? In 1910, Iowa, young Fred Schmidt embarks on a perilous journey of self-discovery. From daring adventures in Minnesota to treacherous escapades in pre-World War I Europe, the search intertwines mystery, destiny, history, and romance in a compelling narrative of one man's pursuit of purpose and identity amidst a backdrop of intrigue and mortal danger. Through Fred's eyes, Dive into a time where every decision can dramatically change one's life <clears throat> and where the whispers of a mysterious voice could hold the key to his true purpose. All right, the search. It's kind of vague, but, um, and the text is an interesting size in the book. I'll just show that to you. Uh, if you've got, if you like large print, you're going to be in luck with this one. Um, let's see here. I have not started this one yet, but um, oh, I think each chapter has like a, a drawing. So there's like some line art for each uh, each chapter. Kind of reminds me a little bit of Little House on the Prairie. Um, yeah, let's see if there's anything more I could tell you. I guess you just you just have to you just have to dive in. You just have to dive in and see what the search is all about by Dwayne Ray. Um, sounds like uh, Fred Schmidt goes a little bit of everywhere in this novel, um, so it should be should be good. I'll let you know. Um, let's see here. Next up, we've got a new book by. This is put out by Regal House Publishing. Um, and this this is a, does not come out until May 7th. <clears throat> but this looked really interesting, and I was contacted about it, and I said, yes, please. This sounds great. This is Akmarl by Judith Lindbergh. And this novel explores women where women warriors descended from the ancient Amazons. So I was like, yes, please. Let me, ooh, I just got blue all of a sudden. Blue, blue, warm. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. 
Judith Lindbergh unearths the forgotten past in her latest novel. Oh, I haven't read anything else by her, but I should check it out. Uh, in her latest novel, Akmarl. Um, again, trade paperback publishes, comes out on May 7th. This is about a powerful woman who leads her people into battle on the ancient Eurasian steppes. The titular character, Akmarl, grows from an orphan in an isolated clan to the imposing leader of a great confederacy. But Ekmarl is no fragile flower. Mm -mm. Who must learn to toughen up? Like her ancestors, the legendary Amazon women of Greek mythology, she is destined for the battlefield from the day she is born. Inspired by archaeological discoveries made across Central Asia from Ukraine to Mongolia and Siberia, Ekmarl brings to life a time and people lost to history and breathes humanity into the provocative image of the woman warrior. At the same time, Ekmarl is a deeply human story about a woman who struggles through tangled obligations of love and loyalty to her people. Um, oh, okay, okay. Ooh, I might have to check this out. I've got a whole, uh, like, four pages of publishing information about the novel and about the author. Um... <clears throat> says here, Akmarl grew out of one question, Lindbergh says. What would a woman like me fight and die for? The answer was clear. She would fight to protect her family. Um, and Judith Lindbergh's uh, previous novel, The Thrall's Tale, was about women in Viking Age Greenland. Okay. And it was called Historical Fiction at its Best by the Philadelphia Inquirer. And praised by our Pulitzer Prize winners, ooh, Geraldine Brooks and Robert Olin Butler. So, yeah. In that case, I'm not sure if um, this would, I thought this was an indie work. But, maybe not. Either way, I'm going to include it in this video. And uh, I can also include it in my next New History on the Horizon um, lineup of new history or historical fiction. I'll include this as well. But, yeah, I didn't realize that she had written The Thrall's Tale. But Regal House Publishing, I guess, is... Uh, it sounds familiar. I, I think I've heard of that publisher before. But and here's our author on the back. I've got a galley, as you can see. Oh, let me, um, you know what? So I was reading from the pub sheet, but let me go ahead and read the back because I, uh, I think it has some interesting uh, copy for the story. Before the Silk Road had a name, nomads roamed the Asian steppes and women fought side by side as equals with men. Like all women of the Saromate, Saromate, Akmarl is bound for battle from birth, training as a girl in horsemanship, archery, spear and blade. Her prowess ignites the jealousy of Urjan, a gifted warrior who hates her as much as he desires her. When Scythian renegades attack, the two must unite to defeat them. Among their captives is Timur, the rebel's enigmatic leader who refuses to be broken, even as he is enslaved. He fascinates Akmarl. But as attraction grows to passion, she is blinded to the dangerous alliance forming between the men who bristle against the clan's matriarchal rule. Faced with brutal betrayal, Akmarl must find the strength to defend her people and fulfill her destiny. All right. Yeah. So that that really add, that adds more to uh, than what that uh, the pub sheet said. That I really like that description. So. Uh, Ooh, this is going to be good. It's going to be good, y'all. So whether it's into you or not, it's going to be included in here and in my new history on the horizon uh, next video. Okay, so Akmarl, guys, check it out. And finally, on this round, oh, yes. Like And like I said, I will have two more um, indie author segments coming up soon one is for nonfiction, and the the next one or the third one will be something new in this channel which is a young adult historical fiction and it's by one author there are three volumes um and i think it will really appeal uh i've read some of the first book and i'm like this is good this is good and i think this would really appeal to some of you out there who enjoy young adult um 
fiction or would like to introduce uh, your children to reading history. It's got like a Native American theme. So it's just in beautiful, beautiful little volumes. I think you'll really enjoy them. So two more segments coming up, focusing on nonfiction and young adult. But to conclude, I want to bring back an author I've mentioned on this channel before. Uh, he sent me this short little novella. Uh, I will be doing a uh, more in-depth coverage of his work when I get the second volume of his, uh, his World War I series. But in the meantime, Patrick Kirk uh, sent me his, um, his, his latest novella, which uh, features a, a short story about one of the characters in the uh, Mud and Misery a story and he's finishing up and where actually it should be it should be published soon I think White Lightning so what I'm going to do is finish reading up Mud and Misery and then read White Lightning and then kind of do a two for coverage on those two books set in World War One I, I should say uh, as seen from the American fighting perspective but he sent me this little novella called Ruthless Fortitude this is Patrick Kirk <clears throat> and this covers Hans Weber Weber uh, we would pronounce it Weber, but in German it'd be Weber, right? Weber. Um, the ferocious heel of the German imperial, the ferocious heel of the German imperialism lands on the quiet countryside of Belgium, squeezed between the brutally contested countryside of Belgium, the savage insurgents, and devastating artillery. Hans Weber is determined to accomplish his desperate mission. Along his journey, he creates allies and enemies inside the German army. The only way he survives is to rely on his instinct and innate ruthless fortitude, baby. Ruthless fortitude. Like I said, a very slim little volume. Um, it's like, I think what Patrick, Patrick Kirk calls these little novellas, he calls them single shots. Um, and, uh, the, the novels follow uh, the, I think it's Tom Dickerson. It's the, the Dickerson universe. Um, and these are, these little novellas, he calls them single shots, which I think is really cool. And he's got a bunch slated. Um, as you can see from the, the printing, the ones that are not in bold are still yet to come single shots. So we'll have these coming up. And as you can see, they cover certain men that are also that cut the characters in the other uh, larger novels. So that's really ingenious. I really like that. Um, yeah, the Dickerson series is Tom Dickerson. Um, from the first battle in World War One at Cantigny, France. Um, and of the battle at Kasserine Pass in Tunisia during World War Two. Oh, wow. Well, these go all the way up. So he's got several novels slated already. He's got them all charted out. Um, I'm going to come at you when I, when I get the other review copy of White Lightning. I'm going to cover the first two in, in, a, in a video book review. And also Ruthless Fortitude. These are single shots, baby. And uh, they won't take long to read. So, uh, yeah. So you've got a nice little glossary in the back. And there's a nice picture of our author who has been so kind to share review copies with me. And uh, I'm really excited to uh, to just just help get the word out on these books because I really his his writing is is great. I really enjoy it. And um, I love just seeing independent authors just take on historical fiction and run with it and enjoy themselves and just really just revel in our history. And so that's what I'm here to do. I'm here to read it and enjoy it and share it with you guys. Um, and also, you know, to help get the word out for our, for our authors. And I also, he sent me this really, really nice uh, metal bookmark. It says, thank you. And I believe his wife made these. So these are really wonderful. And this this kind of clips, as you can see, is just look clip, clip on. So those are some of the, uh, the most recent books I've received from uh, independent authors. And I wanted to, to, you know, bubble those up for you, as I do, as I like to bubble. 
and one of these you're gonna well you'll see these again um this one you'll see real soon because that is gonna fit in with my uh i gotta get i gotta start writing out what i'm gonna do for this event but the good news is bill rutenberg wants to join me for it so we're gonna we're gonna cook up something for the 80th anniversary of d-day and i think it would be a month-long celebrate a celebration or like just um you know not we're gonna remember it you know um and we're just gonna remember it and the sacrifice of the men who who fought and died and um and those who survived and just all of it we're just going to look back at d-day throughout the month of june through various readings both fiction nonfiction. well mostly nonfiction, but i i wanted to throw in some historical fiction i'm gonna propose some ideas for you for documentaries you could watch and some movies so that's kind of where we're going with it and maybe we'll have a nice little wrap up uh, wrap up chat bill and i at the end of the month so let me know what you think about these uh these new books from our independent authors and stay tuned for a couple more segments um because we've got nonfiction and young adult coming your way it's a real exciting time uh, to see so many people out there just putting pen to paper or finger to keyboard and you know following their dream of, of writing a book it's a big deal it really is, and I'm happy to help in any way that I can. Um, so until next time, BookTube, thanks for joining me. Uh, drop a like to let me know if you enjoy the indie author segments that I do. Um, it helps for me to know, you know. But either way, I still plan on doing these. So until next time, thanks for dropping in. At the, it's, it, whew, I can talk. Thanks for dropping in at the History Shelf, guys. <laughs> and until next time, stay safe. Bye-bye.